Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we are going to be continuing with our series, Making Voting More Democratic, Desirability Conditions for Voting Systems. In this video, we will be looking at monotonicity, one of the criterions that we have for voting systems. Now, if a voting system is monotone, basically that means that a candidate cannot improve their final standing by being ranked lower for one particular voter or hurt their standing by being ranked higher. For single winner elections, no winner can become a loser or a non-winner by being ranked higher by a voter, and no loser can become a winner by being ranked lower. This should make sense. It seems that if we had a voting system in which candidate A won and candidate B lost, if we went back and some random voter X changed a lower and put B higher, it'd be really, really strange if B was now the winner and A was now the loser. This seems, once again, like something that is desirable. It would be strange for a smart voter to need to rank their candidate lower on their preferences to make them win, or by ranking someone lower, you would actually cause it to be higher on the social preference, or vice versa versa to rank someone higher would actually make them more likely to lose or more likely to have lower standing in the eventual social preference. That seems quite strange. And most of our voting systems are actually going to follow this rule, but the instant runoff system will not. Consider the following example. A through M are voters, N, O, and P are candidates. Right now, in the first round, no one would have a majority. So we've got a lot of candidates. N's pretty close, but has only 6 of the 13 votes, so just under a majority. A plurality, sure, but not a majority. So with instant runoff voting, we would eliminate the candidate with the fewest first place votes, which is going to be O. That's going to leave P as winning because all of O's voters put P as second, so P will come up and we'll have seven votes for P and only six votes for N. But now, let's say that one of N's voters gets clever. So imagine that voter F changes her preference from NOP to ONP. She ranked N lower and O higher. So if the system obeyed monotonicity, O could be a winner, but N should not be. And if O had of won, if O had have won previously, O couldn't win now. However, what we will see is that since now both O and P have the same number of first place votes, they are both eliminated in the first round. They each have four, and so N is left winning. They each have four, N has five, so N stays alive and N wins because there's no other candidates in the race. Even though it was in fact ranked lower by a particular voter in this system than in the other set of voter preferences where it lost. By being ranked lower, it actually improved its chances. So a smart voter for N should rank O higher than N to get N to win. Because this happens, this does not obey monotonicity. But all of our other systems do. We're not going to go into proving all of that. I just wanted to give the non-example because that's going to be faster. There are proofs out there if you're curious. If you really want me to do one, leave it in the comments below. But for now, that was monotonicity. Next up, we're going to check out the Pareto condition, followed by the Condorcet win criterion, the independence of irrelevant alternatives, and non-dictatorship. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.